Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade exponential equation. We have two, we have x to the power x equals 2 to the power 1 over x, and we're going to be solving for x values. We're going to be looking at different graphs. Uh, I'll first give you the calculus approach, and then we're going to look at some graphs. First of all, I want you to notice that x cannot be 0. That is a given, right? Hopefully. And also, since we have the exponential function x to the power x, and we talked about this before, uh, the base needs to be positive. Because if you have a negative base and then an, you know, um, an fractional exponent, and that causes problems, so that's very problematic. So we're going to assume that x is positive. There are no negative solutions. And then we're going to align both sides under these conditions. If we align both sides, obviously we're going to get rid of uh, all the exponents. So it's going to be a little easier to solve. We're going to move the x. We're going to move the 1 over x. That is the rules for logarithms, right? So if you move the x to the front, it's going to be x ln x. And if you move the 1 over x, it becomes 1 over x times ln 2. Now notice that ln 2 is a constant. So we know that x does not equal 0 and x is positive. Actually, this already contains the requirement that x does not equal 0. So we can safely say that x is always positive. We can multiply both sides by x. And if we do, we get x squared ln x equals ln 2. And this is kind of nice because we have all the x's on one side and we have the, you know, the constants on the other side. So that's kind of nice. And we could also get the same result if we raised both sides to the power x first. And then obviously that would give us the following x to the power x to the power x is the same as 2 to the power 1 over x to the power x. Uh, of course, x is positive, so this is okay. x cancels out. x's are multiplied. x to the power x squared equals 2. So that's another approach you can take, but eventually you're going to get the same thing. Now, this equation I said is nice because we have the, all the variables on the same side. But when I look at this, it doesn't really match up because I have ln x, I have ln 2. So I can't say, hey, can x be 2? No, it's not going to work because that will be 4 times ln 2, but I only have 1 times ln 2. So that might give you some ideas, but here's what I'm gonna pr uh, how I'm going to proceed. I'm going to write the 2 as square root of 2 squared, and the motivation behind that is I do need an additional number here, and that better be a perfect square, uh, sort of. So now the next step is going to be just moving the 2 to the front, just like before x squared ln x equals 2 ln square root of 2. Now, does this work for you? Well, if you notice that x equals square root of 2 works, then you're good. Hopefully you see that. So x equals square root of 2 is a possible solution. By comparing these two expressions, I can safely say that x, equal, x equals square root of 2 works. Now, if you plug it into the original equation, you're going to notice that it works as well. But is that the only solution? That is the million dollar question. So that's what we're going to explore. So let's go ahead and take a look at this function. y equals x to the power x. I could also use f of x and g of x. doesn't matter. No big deal. So we use um, y for different purposes. So don't get st stuck on that. So when I say y equals this, y equals that, they're different functions. Okay, so y equals x to the power x is defined for positive x's. We already talked about it. What about the other one? How about y equals, uh-oh. This is not good. I don't know why this is happening. Notability, why are you doing this to me? Okay, so now, for the second function, we have y equals 2 to the power 1 over x. And that is pretty much defined for all x values, except for, for all x does, that does not equal 0. So as long as x does not equal 0, we're good. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the second function. I, I think we, we talked about this function, the first one, quite a few times, so you should be more familiar, but let's go ahead and take a look at 2 to the power 1 over x closely. So, I'm going to consider the limit. I want to understand the end behavior of this function. So, how about the limit as x approaches, and by the way, x cannot be 0, so can I uh, take the limit as x approaches 0? And x can approach 0 from the right and from the left, but since I'm interested in positive x values, I would like to take uh, x uh, as x approaches 0 from the right. And now, when x approaches 0 from the right, you're going to get 1 over you know, positive zeros. That's what we call it sometimes. 1 over 0, but that's always going to be on the positive side. 
super duper close, one over zero is just gonna be very, very large. And two to the power that is kind of like infinity approaching infinity and two to the power infinity is going to approach infinity. So I can kind of say that limit as x, as x approaches zero from the right of two to the power one over x is equal to positive infinity. Okay, and obviously uh, in this case, x equals zero, which is the y-axis, y-axis is going to be a vertical asymptote. Okay, you'll, you'll, you'll see that in the graph. So that is gonna be a vertical asymptote for this function. What about the uh, limits at infinity? So let's take a look at this. Uh, what happens if x approaches infinity, two to the power of one over x, as x approaches infinity, right or um, positive or negative, doesn't matter, one over infinity is gonna approach zero, two to the power of zero is gonna approach one. So the limit is gonna be one, and the same thing goes for negative infinity, because it doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative, they're both gonna approach zero. Okay, in this case, at least it doesn't matter. So we kind of have a, a horizontal asymptote here, y equals one is gonna be, so this is kind of like a rational function, sort of, uh, it has two asymptotes. So that's kind of gonna give you an idea about the boundaries. And now, if you look at y equals, let's leave it at that and take a look at the other function, which we've looked at before. So I'm gonna real quickly, how about if I gave you the derivative real quick, because you already know that hopefully. This the it, derivative of this function is going to be ln x plus one times x power x. By the way, you can just ln both sides and then get rid of all the exponents and then differentiate both sides with um, implicit differentiation. So that way you can find it. But if I set the derivative equal to zero, I get ln x equals negative one or x equals one over e, which is a critical value for this function. Let's go ahead and make a table. I know some folks like the second derivative approach, but I don't like that. So one over e is going to be the critical value for the derivative. This is how the derivative goes, and this is how the y or the function behaves. So we're going to have a positive derivative for x values that are greater than one over a. And by the way, you can check that. Suppose you replace x with one in the derivative function, uh, you're going to notice that uh, you're getting positive values. So, and then it's going to be negative, of course. This means the function is going to be in decreasing on the interval negative infinity to one over e, well actually I should say zero to one over e because it's not defined for negative uh, values in zero. And then it's gonna be increasing, which means that we're going to have a minimum at one over e. And if you wanted to find, let's say f of x is equal to x over x to the power x, what is f of one over e? That is gonna be one over e to the power one over e. Okay, and that's gonna be kind of like a small value. Well, at least we know that it's less than one, okay? Uh, so we have a minimum, we know the minimum value, and uh, this also shows us that uh, this function f is increasing, increasing on um, 1 over e to infinity. So that's kind of nice, right? We know that it's, it's increasing, and we know its minimum value. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the other function. One more time, we have y equals 2 to the power 1 over x. I'm going to ln both sides ln y is gonna be one over x ln two. And if you differentiate this function y prime over y, you get negative one over x squared. Remember the derivative of one over x is one over, negative one over x squared because it can be written as x to the power of negative one. And the constant will just stay. Well, if you set the derivative equal to zero, you're gonna notice nothing will make it zero because this function is always, always uh, decreasing, okay? Well, it's not always, well, it is decreasing, but anyways, this is what matters. It's gonna decrease on zero to infinity for sure, right? Because um, negative one over x squared is always gonna be negative. And y doesn't matter because it's always positive. All right, so, so we kind of have like an increasing function and then we have a decreasing function, so they should intersect at only one point and that should be the only solution. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graphs and we're gonna wrap it up. So the first graph that I, the first graph that I wanted to show you is y equals x to the power x and we just talked about it, right? As you can see here, it is going to decrease and then increase, making a minimum at uh, one over e, and the y value is just gonna be e, one over e to the power one over e. Uh, and then it's just gonna you know, increase. This is kind of like one, so obviously that's less than one, and then they're gonna uh, de <laughs> intersect. Okay, I just couldn't come up with the word. And that value is going to be square root of two, as you can see here, the x value of the intersection point. All right, so that's one way to approach it, but I also find it helpful to look at it from another perspective. If you graph y equals x to the power x squared and y equals two, because remember our original expression was this, 
and then we said, hey, we can go ahead and raise both sides to the power x, and that's going to give us x to the power x squared equals 2. This is kind of nice because you have a constant on one side, so you have a horizontal line and a curve which will intersect at, you know, a certain number of points, and in this case, it happens to intersect at one point because this is 1, and obviously this is greater than 1 because we're looking at the y equals 2 there, and there is only going to be a single intersection point. And that is going to be the solution, and x value for that is just going to be square root of 2. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.